We used to have quite a lot of patients waiting several hours for CPNs just due to how busy the service was. It's not the first time I've started a shift and um, you've, your very first call within the first half hour of a shift is a concern for person call and you're still there dealing with that either member of the public or still dealing with the follow-up issues or still remaining at the hospital for the conclusion of your shift. I think the majority of the police would bring here and then the CPNs would come to the department and see them here, so that's how they were stretched. I think the pressures were in terms of the, the initial the background is for an individual in distress, um, there's two police officers being brought to the incident, they're not sure what the situation is, the individual in distress is sitting in a police car, then they're going to an emergency department, they're sitting there again with two police officers and you know you have a consultant in an emergency department coming to say well this individual is not for us. So knowing that that person is extremely distressed, is extremely upset, um, it just feels that that pathway is unnecessary for individuals. I think most members of the public, whether you're law abiding or not, don't really like the police within their house, wouldn't really like the police round about them. So some of these members of the public, eh, when we're down at accident emergency with them, a lot of folk maybe get a lot of looks when they've got two police officers beside them. So taking that element away from that makes a huge difference to how the public can they access this, the, the service and how they react from it. So mental health assessment units were developed back in March 2020 as a consequence of the pandemic. It was primarily initially to reduce footfall through the accident emergency departments where historically unscheduled care psychiatric evaluations would take place. So in order to accommodate our ED colleagues who were obviously overwhelmed initially with the pandemic, it was a decision was made that unscheduled care would come to a mental health assessment unit as opposed to going to a general hospital setting. So having it a wee bit more enclosed where they're not police officers are parading them around in, in a public area like an emergency department where we can go to an enclosed unit, um, it makes a big difference and it also makes a big difference when we're at the home address, when we've got a direct link in there, it sometimes can bring someone who is in a bit of crisis just back down to be able to be able to speak with them, to be able to have a level conversation where we can move them forward. The police can just self-refer so they're not coming to any need to wait and especially when it can be a couple of hours. In terms of setting up to support the emergency services and first responders, the mental health assessment unit, it, it, it does feel like um, a, a hub. Patients are going up to the unit so they're not waiting about a &E, um, and they're getting the appropriate care from the special to the need. There is a triage car that, that is attached to the mental health assessment units which has a paramedic on board and a band six senior unscheduled care practitioner nurse. So they would undertake referral from the Scottish Ambulance Service for referrals that are determined to have a psychiatric component. And then they could either utilise the mental health assessment unit if they need further support and advice from a psychiatric standpoint, or the nurse within the triage car can actually refer directly into inpatient services, again reducing the need to go to accident emergency departments. Most of the jobs, I think it's about 80% of our taskings will end up with a mental health assessment done in the patient's own home uh, and left at home with the appropriate follow-up uh, with, with their own mental health teams. Patients sometimes come with a kind of preconceived idea that, you know, they need hospital admission, they need medication or whatever. Uh, and that's sometimes need to be tempered by what actually is appropriate for them. Some people don't do well in psychiatric hospital because it's, you know, there's acutely ill people there and you're taking people away from their family surrounding and such like. People on the ground have that alternative and they know that it's not an emergency department, it's not a bed that this person's looking for, it's not a clinical assessment this person's looking for. It's really important to have that alternative without having to put people through that additional distress. 
The CDRS is a Compassionate Distress Response Service. It was set up after a multi-agency collaborative to look at an alternative pathway for people who are experiencing distress. It was to test a new idea, test a new approach for people in distress not having to go to emergency services, to clinical services, to, to medical services. For on-month referrals, you know, up to four weeks they can they speak with patients on a daily basis uh, and, and get them through some, some crisis that they may be experiencing at that time. So they are an important uh, outcome for us, a CDRS service. Not everybody in distress has mental health issues um, and you know the and the, the referrals that we are getting, I mean, they're very complex referrals as well, but, you know, they're related to issues, relationship, family breakdown, housing issues, family issues, domestic abuse, you know, domestic abuse. There's, there's lots of complex issues as, as well, but it doesn't need a, a clinical or a formal service response. We will support you um, until you feel that those feelings of distress have alleviated and you feel in a better place. It's been night and day for officers um, being able to deal with uh, concern for personal calls for folk in a uh, mental health crisis. Um, again, it's just a reassurance uh, for the officers that they know there's someone there at hand to be able to provide the support and the reassurance and guidance for the police officer as well as the member of the public that they're trying to assist. The relationships that we've built up with staff there have been very positive, uh, very productive. I think at the end of the day, police uh, NHS staff, Scottish Ambulance Service, we're all working towards uh, the same goal and that is providing the best support possible to uh, people who are suffering uh, a mental health crisis and um, having, ha having a, a common goal um, has, allowed us, has allowed that relationship to develop in a really positive way. I think for the patients it's definitely an improvement to the pathway. One of the things that we're very conscious of uh, in psychiatry is the patient uh, journey and trying to streamline that as best we can. The police interacting with someone, determining that they think they've got a psychiatric crisis and being able to pick up a phone and be in a mental health assessment unit within 20 minutes, half an hour, yeah, I, I don't think there's any debate that that's a much improved client experience.